I drove down a grooved dirt road through a tunnel of trees until we came upon a smaller cemetery, surrounded by a spike-iron gate in the middle of shadowed woods. Skyscraping pine trees whistled in the hot wind, and as I looked beyond the long bars, something close to fear turned my blood cold. Give my chair out of the turtle hall, he said, twisting the cap tight on the bottle. I helped him into his chair and rolled him through the A-shaped iron gate that creaked back on stiff hinges, a sound that did not much calm my nerves. This place was altogether spooky. Only five graves here, none relatives of mine. I wanted to leave. This cemetery was built long before that church, Papa claimed. I pushed him over the uncut grass while he informed me about the inhabitants. Over there, twin sisters, eight years old, buried the same day in 1865. The headstone formed an M, bearing their names, Molly Sinclair and Angel Sinclair. Next to the fence was a family of three, buried in a row, husband, wife, and son. Papa did not bother bringing up their names, and for some reason I thought they had met a horrible end. Push me over there by that little tree, he said. The rickety-looking tree was actually a large thorn bush, blooming with strong thorns and dark leaves. A black widow spider had set up housekeeping between the bush and a concrete pole jutting about four inches out of the ground. Judging from the thumb-sized venom sack on that thing, if I'd walked into its intricate web and was bitten, there was a great chance I'd have dropped dead where I stood. Proper place for such an episode, I suppose, but I couldn't help it. I didn't want to be buried anywhere near this ancient graveyard. Why are we here? Why the hammer? Watch out for that spider, Papa. Huh? Spider? Well, there's a... Uh, take me over by that pole, he ordered, hardly concerned. What's this? I asked. It's a grave. Except for the piece of driftwood wedged tightly between the earth and the nameless marker, there was certainly nothing special about it. <coughs> Help me up, son. I helped him kneel beside the grave, the look on his face a cross between sadness and anger. Then he raised the hammer high above his head and brought it down solid on the marker. He whacked the pole like he was driving a nail through wood. Bam! 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 He did not tremble, go breathless or retreat softly, sending down a total of ten licks. Keep burning, you devil. What are you doing, Papa? That Percy Yates grave. Gotta keep him down there. Make sure he don't come back to our house. Thinking Cecil Tangle had lost it, all I heard was the wind whistle through the trees. I pitied his decision to come out here and bang on a grave marker of a long-dead outlaw. Superstition, I guessed. Evil minds laid waste long before I was born, but I was hard-pressed to believe Percy Yates's ghost was responsible for the destruction of my property. As upset as I'd been over the damage to my house, in order to keep my sanity, I forced myself to extract some degree of reality out of my grandfather's childish accusations. Ghosts don't throw things. They don't break windows or lie in wait hoping you'll find vague little notes shoddily taped around steel balls. He walked the roads with a hatchet, Cecil said. Rob folks in buggies. Lived out in the woods, close to Bayou Rouge. Some say he kidnapped babies, stole horses, stole food out of gardens. No gun thrower caught him, and son, were they looking for him. I helped him back to the car, my mind's eye conjuring up images of a time not so long ago when Percy Yates passed through these very woods, robbing strangers on the shadowed trail, shredding blood on this earth. What sent chills up my neck was that all these years, Cecil Tangle knew where to locate that monster.